chica. All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at similar triangles, and we're going to focus on how you can find a side length or an angle when you know two triangles are similar. Uh, so first thing, a similar triangles basically have all the same angles and the same side ratios. I'll look at what that means in a second. Uh, in other words, you probably say that they're the same triangle, only one's bigger and one's smaller. So I'm just going to demonstrate uh, for a moment here. So I've got a triangle here, and um, I've recorded it as a picture. I'm going to uh, copy it. And then, we'll, and then we'll paste it. So we've got another copy of the same triangle. So these two triangles are congruent or isometric, which means they're the same size and also the same shape. Now, if I were to go, uh, if you do any photo editing, I can drag it this way, and it makes it longer. So when I drag it, because I'm only stretching it in one direction, it uh, does not create two similar triangles. Uh, let's try again. If I try and drag it down, Again, it stretches it vertically, and I'm not creating two similar triangles. And if you've done any work with uh, photos on the computer before, you know that if I really want to change it by the same amount in both directions, I've got to go to the corner here. And when I do that, then I do create two similar triangles. So they're the same triangle, same ratio, same angles, only the one over here that I enlarge is bigger, and the other one is smaller. So Let's go back over here. So the big question is, if I have two triangles, uh, what can I do with that? So we're going to look at, if I got two triangles, how can I use it for, uh, first we're going to look at finding an angle. So in the diagram below, we're told that triangle ABC, that's the one over here, uh, and this little squiggly line means it's similar to uh, triangle ABC, or A prime, pardon me, B prime, C prime, this is a smaller one here. So we're told the two triangles are similar, and we're asked to find the angles of our smaller triangle, and we're not given them. So remember what it said, that similar triangles have the same uh, angles. So we can then match them up. Since down here, angle A is 105 degrees, that means that this angle in here would have to be 105 degrees. And I can mark that in. Since angle C is 40 degrees, over here, angle C prime would be 40 degrees. And the angle up top here would match this angle. Uh, so it would be uh, 35 degrees. Uh, not too difficult uh, when we're trying to find an angle. Let's do another uh, quick example. And um, this one, again, we're told that triangle ABC over here is similar to triangle DAF. So, um, so they've got all the same uh, si uh, ratio of side lengths and all the same angles. And we're asked to find the angles of uh, triangle DEF. Now, why this one's a little bit more confusing is just because our uh, orientation has been changed. So here, the EA is at the top. And, uh, well, it's not quite matching up. So the A here would actually correspond to uh, vertex D on this triangle. And again, we have to kind of spin them a little bit. So that means this angle up here would be 25 degrees because it would have to match. And uh, angle B on the small triangle, well, that would end up being angle E over here. So that would be 100 degrees. And angle F would match to angle C, but we're actually not given angle C. Uh, so here we'd have to do a little bit of, uh, of calculations. As you probably know, a triangle has 180 degrees. And since there's 100 degrees here and 25 degrees here, we'd have 180. Uh, minus 100, which would give us 80, minus uh, 25, which gives us 55 degrees. So our third angle down here uh, would have to be 55 degrees. And uh, that'd be the same same as angle C, so maybe I'll, I'll fill that in too. So if you've got similar triangles, find the angles out are really easy. Whatever the angles are of one triangle, just find the... Um, angle that would match on your other one, and you can uh, and you can figure it out from there. So we're going to make it a little bit trickier now. We're going to look at finding the side lengths. Now, it says up here method one. I'm actually going to look at two different methods um, that you can use. They basically, they both do the same thing, but they kind of do it in different ways. So you can pick the one that, um, that works best for you. So here we're told that triangle ABC is similar to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, which is over here. So we have the big one and the smaller one. We're asked to find the side lengths of our smaller triangle, and if we know We've got all three side lengths of the bigger one, but only one of the smaller triangle. So we're going to have to go from there. All right, so what do we got here? First thing we need to do is find the side ratio. Uh, some of you may have referred to that as K factor. Uh, I'm not sure why they used the letter K, but um, 
you'll hear it used quite regularly. Uh, and we find the ratio by simply dividing the matching side lengths uh, that you know. So I need to have one side of my uh, big triangle and its matching side of the smaller triangle. And since I only know the one side of the smaller triangle, this one, uh, B prime, C prime, I'd have to compare it with, uh, with this side of our bigger triangle because they, again, they match up. So when it says finding the ratio, it just means we're going to divide the two. Now, I always like to put the uh, bigger number on top. Um, so when I look at the ratio, actually, I'll, we, we can first look at it in terms of the side lengths. So we'll say we're basically going to look at the side length of BC, which is this side of the bigger triangle, the hypotenuse, and we're going to divide it by the side length B prime C prime, so that's its matching side on the smaller one. And again, the ratio, when we set up like a fraction, that's all it means to be a ratio. And so now I can fill in my numbers. And as I was going to say, I always like putting the bigger, uh, bigger number on top. I find that it usually kind of helps your answer make more sense. Um, but it will work regardless of, um, of whether you put the bigger number or smaller number on top. So our ratio will be 10 divided by 5 and then we'd reduce that to 2. So for those of you using k factor, you'd say k equals 2. Um, I just like to refer to this as a side ratio because that tells me what it is. And uh, what that means is that the side lengths of the bigger triangle are twice the length of the side length of the smaller triangle. And since for similar triangles, whatever the ratio is between one pair of sides, it'll also be the same ratio between the other sides. So we can now use this information to find out what our two uh, missing sides are. So I'm going to go over here. We'll look at our our uh, second step. Part of me. Let's go back up. We'll look at our second step down here. So now it's saying we're going to use the ratio k, which we found up here was two, and we're going to multiply or divide by a side on one triangle to determine its matching side on the other triangle. Now is, we're going to have to look at which information do I have and which information do I want. In this particular case. I've got the sides of my bigger triangle, and I have to find out the sides of my smaller triangle. Now, you notice it says multiply or divide. Well, it's going to depend on which direction that I'm going, whether I'm going from my small triangle to my bigger one, or the bigger one to the smaller one, and, and how I set my ratio up here. So you're going to have to use a little bit of your own judgment to figure out which way to go. So in this case, we basically we said two. We said the sides of the bigger triangle are twice as big as the smaller one. So I'm going to basically take 6.5 then, which is the side from, of AB in my bigger triangle, and I'm going to divide it by 2. And when we do that, it gives us 3.25. Uh, I guess that would be, that'd be centimeters. And so side length A prime, B prime over here is 3.25 uh, centimeters. And the last thing I always like to do here, and this is going to seem a little bit obvious, but pardon me, let me scroll down a little bit. Uh, confirm that your answer makes sense. And all I mean by that is we want to know the larger side lengths with the larger triangle and that the smaller side lengths are with the smaller triangle. So if we were to have accidentally multiplied by 2 and then divided by 2, uh, we would have got a side length of 13 for the small triangle. That doesn't make sense. The side lengths here obviously have to be smaller because it's a smaller triangle. So that's all. And if you... Uh, if you do that little quick kind of check, it's going to help, uh, help you find that error. So we found A prime, B prime. Let's find our third side. And we're going to do that same way. In this case, we've got 6 centimeters. And since our K factor is 2, we'll divide by 2. And when we do that, 6 divided by 2 gives us 3. So the side length over here is going to be 3 centimeters. All right, so we're going to look at another example here. And uh, this time I'm going to show you the second method. Again, it's really doing the same thing. It's just kind of setting it up in a different way. Uh, so we have another example. We have two triangles, triangle ABC on the left, DEF on the right. We're told that they're similar. Again, that little squiggly line means similar. And we're asked to find the missing side lengths. So in this example, we're going to start by setting it up uh, set up a ra as a ratio. So we're going to take the side length that we have. Uh, on one triangle, match it up with the side length on the other one, and then look for the side length uh, that we're trying to find out. It sounds a little bit more complicated than it really is. So let's go through first. We need to have one side length on the small triangle and its matching side on the big triangle. So if we take a look around, again, B would match up to vertex E. 
C would match up to F, and A would match up to D. So AC, in that case, the 20 centimeters, matches up with, uh, with side DF. And uh, now if I want to find out, say, side DE on my big triangle, I would need to know its matching side on this smaller one, so uh, AB. So when we set up our ratio then, I'm going to basically say, well, AC, that's a small, sorry for a small one, divided by its matching side on the big triangle, DF, will be equal to AB, which is the side length of the small one, divided by uh, DE, its matching side on the big triangle. So again, I'm doing small divided by big, small divided by big. As long as I'm consistent in how I set up my uh, numerators and denominators in my ratio, uh, I'm going to be fine. So the big part here is that setting it up is a little bit trickier if you want to do it the ratio, and you've got to make sure you've done that correct. So next piece of that, uh, whoops, pardon me. Next step is we're going to move it down a little bit. We're, we're going to cross multiply uh, and then divide. So uh, we'll fill in our values. So we'll go over here. So uh, AC, that's uh, 20. Let's slide up here so we don't run out of space. Divided by 30 equals AB, 18. Divided by DE. Well, we don't know. You could call that X. I'm going to leave it as DE. And for those of you remember, you probably call it cross multiplying. I say cross multiplying and divide because we're going to do both pieces. So if uh, DE then equals 30 times 18, here's the cross multiplying part, divided by 20. I'm a little cramped here, but. And now we can just go down and we'll bring up our uh, calculator and put in our uh, ratio. So we have 30 times 18 divided by 20, and that gives us 27. So DE with them would equal 27 uh, centimeters. And just like in, uh, in our next method, the last piece is going to be to confirm that our answer makes sense. And since 27 is bigger than 18 and DE is on the bigger triangle, um, then that, uh, that makes sense there. So it all, it all fits. So we're going to try, uh, let's do one more example to find out the other side. So on this side, I want to, in this case, I want to find out uh, BC. So once again, I have to look at, well, what information do I know? So I'm going to, I'm going to stick with this original one, the two side lengths I was given. And uh, so we have AC divided by DF equals, now this time I'm going to have to put my unknown BC on the top because my tops, as I've set it up, represents my small triangles and then putting the bigger triangle on the bottom. Again, you could do it either way as long as you're consistent, it doesn't matter. So BC matches up the side EF. And then after that we fill in our values. So AC is a 20, but 20 divided by 30 BC, I don't know, I'm just going to call that BC, and then divided by 15, and then we cross multiply and divide. So in this case we have 20 times 15 divided by 30, and again we can take out our calculators again, slide over this way now, 20 times 15 divided by 30, and it gives us an answer of, uh, of 10. So BC is 10 centimeters, and again, we can confirm 10 is smaller than 15, so that makes sense. So two methods, again, they're both really doing the same thing. They're taking in the information you know and finding a ratio. Here we're dividing it, and then we're using that information 
uh, and one of the other pieces that we know to find out a piece that we that we don't. So um, what I like about the first method when we find our value of k is it has some meaning. We said in the, in, in the first case um, the sides were twice as long as the others. That makes sense. In this case, our value of k um, would be would be one and a half or or, or 0.66 or two thirds, which is basically just reducing this fraction. But most people won't really pick up on that. So it helps you get the answer, but it doesn't really give you that extra information. So you can use whichever method. They both work, and I uh, hope that it helps you understand uh, similar triangles a little bit better. Thanks for watching. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.